So uh, before we get into the video today, I just wanted to talk about something that I think is really important. Um, as a lot of you are probably already aware, Brent over at half Ass Customs has recently lost his shop to a fire. And I don't know the guy. I've never met him, never talked to him. Uh, he is a fellow Canadian. He lives a fair ways off from, from where I'm at, but uh, the car community here in Canada is is quite small. So when when something happens to, to someone, you you feel it for sure. Um, and what's what he's going through right now is just uh, I I can't even really comprehend that. It's uh, it, it's horrible. And like a lot of you, I've been uh, following his channel on YouTube now for the past couple years and. Uh, it's, it's easy to tell from watching him that he's a genuinely good person and just unbelievably talented individual. Like, uh, there's, there's very few people like him in the world that, uh, that can do what he can do. And he's, he's the kind of person I think that can basically, whatever he puts his mind to, he can achieve it. And you go through his videos and like he, he, he builds an entire car from basically nothing. And he does everything himself, like the, the frame, suspension, uh, engine. He he does all the wiring, uh, bodywork, metalwork. Uh, he even cuts his own glass interiors. And they're just like I said, there, there's not very many people like him in the world. And the fact that he would actually take the time to share his talents with us is just uh, incredibly generous. And I know, I know we don't have the, the biggest audience here, but I do believe you folks are, are one of the best audiences that a guy could ask for. So I, I just wanted to ask that all of you uh, could show him some support in, in whatever way you can. Um, he has two channels, uh, Half Ass Customs, and I believe his second channel is called Half Ass Customs, the other half. So if you could all go over there and just uh, watch the videos and uh, leave them a like and, and just maybe a comment or a nice note and just, just encourage him to, to keep going and uh, continue doing what he's doing. Um, I believe there's also a, a GoFundMe set up for him as well. So if you're able to, to chip in a couple bucks, um, I'm sure you'd appreciate that. So I'm gonna put a link to both of his channels as well as the GoFundMe in the description of this video. So again, uh, whatever, however you can uh, just show him some support, it would be much appreciated. And uh, I believe uh, from what I, I've heard anyways, is that he does have insurance on everything, but uh, as well, you're all car people, so you know that, uh, I mean, this stuff, a lot of it you can't just replace with, with money. All the, all the stuff, the, the parts, the tools, everything, it's like, uh, it's kind of proof of our time here on this, this earth. Like it's, it's all becomes part of us and the people who had it before us, you know, the stories behind where we got that stuff and, and just all the, you know, the effort that goes into, um, you know, building cars and, you know, making tools or buying tools or tracking the stuff down. Like it, you just, you can't replace that ever. So. Um, he does, I do know, you know, I'm fairly confident he's going to rebuild everything better, bigger and better than it was. But again, that it's a, it's a pretty catastrophic blow and it's pretty awful to see anybody go through that. So again, uh, please show the guy some support. All right, back on the old uh, chicken truck project. So today we're going to be TIG welding in this door bottom here. And then we've also got to address this rust at the front here. And we're just going to try and make this uh, door bottom all solid again. So there'll be some tips on, I guess, uh, doing that without screwing it up too bad, hopefully.
you can see we've now got a nice accurate line to cut to and this will just drop right in. So originally I had tack welded this in with a MIG and you saw me there grinding off the uh, MIG weld tacks and now we're going to take a look here. We have a few issues. If you can see this uh, edge of this metal is not even close to being flush with this and that's due to this dent here. So when I tack welded this in originally the outer skin was still on so I didn't have access to hammer this out. But before we do any welding at all we have to correct this bring out this dent here to get this all flushed up. We want it all, both edges of the panel to be completely flush with each other because let's say we're looking at this from this angle here. We have our two pieces here of metal and so you can see we have a misalignment here and if we just go to weld it like that and then we grind off the top of this weld here like that then there's still going to be this step here and it becomes very difficult to remove that if not impossible if this is a MIG weld then it's just about impossible with a TIG weld you can hammer it and planish it out but it does take extra time so we want to correct all of these problems now before we weld it to save time later So this is a pretty mediocre weld here. Uh, I think it'll stick two pieces together, but nothing to be proud of at all. Uh, you can see we had to start and stop a lot, which is not ideal. It did stay uh, fairly straight. Yeah, there's definitely some some waviness to it, but it hasn't like completely, you know, destroyed the panel or anything. And I'm not sure it's going to show up or not, but if you look 
If you look at the heat effect zone, you can literally see everywhere I stopped and started or where I had an issue or, or ran into uh, something or other. And if you look here, you know, you can see it's low here and low here and then high here right where I stopped. So um, if, you, uh, if you go across it as consistent as you possibly can, then, then you don't have these issues and it's just one fell swoop and, and it makes a lot less of a mess. But um, this way, it's actually, you see the weld seam is high, so it all needs to be planished flat. And of course, this is all due to the weld shrinking. It's pulling together and therefore it's either going to create a high spot or a low spot. And in this case, it's pulled upwards and it's created a high spot. So this will all need to be planished flat. Again, this is another good reason that we pulled the skin off is because if this went all high and then we had the skin on, we really, there's not much room in here to get in and, and planish this flat. And uh, we, we'd never really get it looking quite right. You know, you'd end up just beating it in and then filling over it, which uh, you don't really want to do that at the bottom of a door because it's, I mean, it's opening, closing and slamming and everything like that and the steel rests up against it. So we want to try to at least get it in the ballpark which we're going to start doing now. If we look, hopefully this will show up on camera, but um, it doesn't look like it's going to. Okay, over here. If you look here, you can see kind of where it's kind of dull looking almost. This little dot here, all along here, here, compared to the rest of it. And what that is, is that's where we're directly hitting metal on metal and we are stretching that area. So that area is stretched. And so when you start seeing that, then you know that you're, you're stretching the weld back out and bringing it back up to level. And as we go along, we can see all of that. So sometimes if there's little blobs and, and stuff on the back, you have to knock those off just so it's even. Usually I just leave the, the bottom alone. The other issue we have here is that we, we tack welded this on with a MIG. So all of the MIG welds are going to be harder than the TIG welds. So it's going to, it's going to plan out a little differently. And that, that difference for, for the bottom of the door isn't a big deal. But if we were doing an exterior panel on a nicer car, we would want to do all of our welding with the TIG so that we're not introducing different, uh, different hardnesses of material into the panel. Just that, that little bit of hammer and dolling we've done right now. At this point, this would be ready for, for, literally one coat, one light coat of filler, and you would be done. So uh, very fast, easy to get this all straightened back out again. As you're going, you want to constantly recheck 
the shape, recheck what you're doing uh, before you cut anything off, check the shape, make profile gauges of your shape of the panel so you know what you're trying to get to. Then after you weld it, obviously you start planishing it and just every little, you do a little bit at a time, check to the shape, do a little bit more, check until you get back to the shape that you want, check both surfaces. Um, because if you go over, then it's, uh, it starts getting more difficult to go back. So it's all just done. It doesn't, you don't just magically hit it once and then get it back into shape. You saw it is pretty easy to get this level again, but it's just always very good practice. To just constantly recheck everything. Do a little bit at a time. Don't, uh, don't be in a rush. Don't try to do everything all at once and don't, you know, we're not even really hitting any of this very hard to get, to get where we need to go. So. Um, that's just always very important to just just recheck everything as you go because the more time you spend checking the less time you spend having to go back and you know fix mistakes so like I said this is you know more than acceptable for for any kind of filler over that that would you know you put filler on it now and it would last a hundred years and be fine but we're gonna waste a little bit more time on it we're gonna as you can see the weld is still visible obviously so we're going to just keep going and keep uh, keep smoothing this out. We're probably going to use the shrinking disc a little bit because this is a this is a flat panel. So in the process of trying to make the weld disappear, it's probably going to get a little little stretched, and we don't want it like you know bowed out or whatever. We just want it flat. So uh, we'll just continue going on here and and see if we can make this uh, this weld seam disappear. And if not, then uh, we'll just blame the tools or, or whatever else. I just ran some 80 grit on a block over here to kind of highlight where we need work. Um, there is also a few little dings and dents along this, this bottom panel, the original panel. And then if we look here, you can see where this this stamping is for this, uh, this pocket here. Everywhere that kind of goes in like this, there's a, a low that translates into the surrounding metal and uh, you also see this on exterior panels, not quite as much because they're on the outside, but they didn't care back then about any of the interior panels as, like, why would you? But uh, we're going to try to just just work out these, these lows the best that we can, as well as continue working out the rest of the seam and see how, uh, how we can get it, if we can make it disappear or... So you can see now a little better, um, hopefully. Oh, the camera, there you go. So you can see our weld seam here. If you look at it, it's uh, it's now fairly consistently dull all the way across. It's kind of a different shade. So you can see exactly that the hammer and dolly were getting right on that weld and crushing that weld back flat again. And since I showed this last, I did have a couple nubs on the, the bottom of the panel. So I just went and lightly ground over the back just to knock everything so that it's flat again. So that we don't have those any more issues again. It, it's got to be fairly, you know, flat and consistent if you want to get it flat and consistent on the outside. So uh, again, hopefully you can see now that uh, we're getting a pretty consistent uh, a pattern across there so we know we're kind of on the right track.
Now as we run the block over it, we can see that it's still, you know, uh, the shiny areas are where the block is touching, so that's indicating high, and then the areas where it's not touching is low, so we have a definite ripple or high spot here and here. This high spot is, again, most likely caused by this stamping here. It's just a deflection in the metal itself, and then I'm not sure this, this one right here, also possibly a, a stamping defect here. But it's translating into the rest of this and so what we could do is we could bring these low areas up to match the rest of this but when I put a straight edge across this way we're trying to keep this fairly flat across here because that's the way it was before and if we go and try to raise it up to this level then it's going to have too much dish this way it'll be straight this way but we want it to be straight both ways. So we always have to consider the shape of the panel from both directions, not just the front to back, but also the up and down.
Well, I was getting a bit skeptical, but I gotta say we are starting to see some progress here. See, uh, we're nice and really nice and flat along this way. And we're also making pretty good progress on our, uh, this way as well. We still got some more work to do, but, uh, it was, uh, it was pretty bad before and, uh, yeah, we're just going to keep going, I guess.
Well, uh, we've been uh, at this for, for a fair while now, just uh, fiddling around with it, uh, bumping up the low spots, tapping down the high spots, and we uh, finished it off using our, our Vixen body file here to, uh, to give it that final smoothing. And now we're just going to go over it with uh, 80 grit on our body grinder to just take out these file marks. And then we'll sand it with a, a dual action sander with, with 80 grit again to, uh, and then that would be in theory, I guess, uh, as far as we can take it. So we'll get started on that, I guess. I don't know if it uh, came across on the, the movie footage there or not, but I, uh, this thing kicked my tail and I, I screwed it up quite badly. So I, uh, we were able to recover from it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't even know. Um, it's going to be okay. It's a, it's a door bottom. I think, I think I can live with it now. We were able to get it. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I mean, we are totally flat across this way, which, I mean, that's, uh, that's a challenge on these flat crown panels. And we're also, we're also pretty, uh, pretty flat all the way across this, this way as well. Again, that's what we were after. We didn't, we didn't want it like, you know, domed up or like a big giant lump or something sticking out at the bottom of there because the seal's got to fit along here so it's got to be pretty flat right but like i don't know i uh, i messed this up i don't know if you were watching the video or not this is not the tool's fault i just want to say this is the tool you know this tool here it's this tool's fault so i'll try to explain uh what i i did wrong here here's the deal these shrinking discs, I'm pretty new to using them. And I gotta say, it, uh, it does exactly what it's advertised to do, which is to shrink metal. And it does a wonderful job of that. I don't, like, I don't even think I would ever need to use a, a torch again for shrinking. This thing, it, it shrinks fast, like, uh, and, and, uh, Quite a bit uh, more than than what uh, I, I expected it to, and we haven't even gotten into that thing yet. The uh, the problem we ran into is that I'm quite used to doing things my my ham fisted way, which is just to you know work the metal all out using all hand tools, and I I kind of I've screwed up enough stuff where I've I've figured out kind of I guess. Maybe I didn't realize that uh, I had or not, but I've gotten to the point where I can kind of, I know just when to put the right amount of stretch in without overdeveloping the panel. So we don't have to really do any shrinking ever. Uh, you did see there was a couple spots where we had damage on this upper panel and then also a factory defect here. So we did have to do a little bit of shrinking on this, but um, what I was, trying to do uh, if you saw in the video we were going back and forth and back and forth with this shrinking disc and i was after i did my initial shrinks where they i thought they needed to be i thought well uh i've heard a lot of people use it like kind of as a surface finishing tool so i was trying to use it to actually you know finish out this this surface and the problem with that is that, well, it, it's a shrinking disc, it, it's going to shrink and it didn't need to be shrunk. And the second problem is, is that we're using the five inch wheel, which is only covering a very small amount of the panel at a time. And we were holding it flat as we were going. But again, this is, this is like if you're trying to do, you know, all your body work on a 59 Cadillac with a six inch dual action sander. 
it's not going to get straight ever. So by doing that, we were just introducing more and more waves into the panel and I, I'm stubborn, so I just kept going and, and it kind of, it would look like it was, we were getting somewhere and it would feel okay just from a light touch. You know, if you actually ran your hand across it like that, then you could feel it was wavy. And if you stood back in the right light, you could see the thing was just like, it was like a Mississippi wave pool. It was, it was quite a waving back at me, all friendly like and everything. So, and we kept going back and forth and I, I was like, you know, Again, I'm, when you ever get, whenever I get a new tool, I have to push it to its limits and just abuse it and use it wrong and then figure out like where those limits are. And I think we, uh, we determined that this is not a, a good finishing tool for our welds because like I said, I kind of already, this is just something that comes from experience and practice and screwing stuff up over and over again. It's not a talent thing or anything like that. It's just, I've. I guess I've gotten to the point where I can figure out, you know, just how much stretch it needs just by reading the metal without, you know, having to do a lot of shrinks. But then as soon as we start shrinking it and running this disc over it, and then we introduced all the waves and then we we're going back and trying to planish it out and then stretching it and then having to go back and mess around. And it just added a lot of unnecessary steps to the thing. Now, I think this one, it's a, it's, contacting a much larger surface area so it would do a better job of blending things out but i think just from my experience so far um it still has to be finished by hand to get the the results that i'm after and i think if i had a planishing hammer where i would just easily run it across then this would be very handy you could go back and forth between that and get it almost you know 100 percent with that but just with hand tools i think hand finishing it um, just, I don't know, it just seems to work better that way. So I think it might be kind of interesting because I still have to do a bottom on the, uh, the other door. So I think I'm just going to do that the way that I normally do it and then see, you know, if we can get, I think we can get, well, this same result as, as we did on this side without having to resort to that other than to maybe if there's, uh, any damage in, in this area or, you know, factory defect somewhere, but I'm not going to do this all over the whole thing again. I think that was a, that was a bad idea. And I think I don't get into how long stuff takes, but in this case, I've been messing around with this for, I don't know, a day and a half now. And I think, you know, I was only planning to, I thought it would take me an afternoon to finish this out. I think I could do that just with hand tools to get it to this stage but i spent a day just using that and going back and forth and trying to get it 100 percent using that and i i tried it every which way i tried different techniques and different methods and things and it just wasn't getting me where i wanted and then i started to just do it by hand and then to to file finish it and I got about 95% there and then I had a few just very very microscopic imperfections so I thought well I'll just do another sweep with this thing wrong if you look at the video about at 29 or so minute mark you can see I, I had just finished using this and then I go and I take the file to check it out and it's like that again I had to basically it was it was worse than than it was after I had finished welding it. So we just, so I had to start all, all over again and that was another half day to get it back to straight again. We just used our traditional hammer and dolly methods, bump up the low spots, tap down the high spots, back and forth, back and forth. And then we use our bullseye pick to get the last little bit out and then, you know, finish it off by hand with the Vixen file. And we got it straight again, or as straight as it's gonna be for a door bottom, but that was, I was getting, uh, getting unhappy there for sure and uh so it just shows you i'm human too i screw stuff up but you can always save it doesn't matter how bad it is you can always save it so um yeah we're, we're gonna try i think it'll be a fun comparison if i do the other door bottom just the way i normally do it and see if we can get it done and uh get this result in less time and uh without going 
you know, spending a, an eternity going back and forth on it. I'm not writing these off, but these are an excellent tool and I definitely still recommend them. And I'm definitely looking forward to using this one because I think it's going to work a lot better for blending out damage and even possibly blending out weld seams. We have a lot of damage on the exterior of the door that we still have to repair. So I'm looking forward to using this. This one is mostly for doing very localized shrinks, smaller areas and getting into areas where, where, you know, the bigger disc won't fit. So, um, definitely still a worthwhile tool and it, it moves metal fast, like uh, a lot faster than I was expecting. So that's why we kind of, that's why we made a mess of this. Sorry again for the, the rant, but I think it's, it's important to, to show these things. Uh, just one more observation I have here. When using this, uh, you saw when I started out, I was quenching it with water afterwards, as I think most people say to do that. But uh, as I started working it, with it more and more, I actually kind of discovered that it works better if you just let it cool naturally. When I was quenching it, um, I just found it was starting to kind of work hard in the metal a bit. And then when I just let it cool naturally, it was, the metal was kind of, it was going back to its proper state. So, uh, that's my take on that. Just, I think it works better if you cool naturally. Plus the other downside to the water is it gets everywhere and rusts all your bare metal. So that's definitely not, not cool. So I'm glad that it, it does work better without the water. Cause that was one of the main reasons that I wasn't really a fan of these to begin with. The one thing with the water is the reason people say to use that is because you know you can see the steam coming off of it if you can see the steam it's working so we knew that our technique was getting hot enough because we were getting lots of steam so once we figured out you know the right i guess amount to use it or whatever to get it to do stuff then there was no point in in seeing that steam because we already knew you know this much was going to shrink it that much so still got some more playing around to do obviously and uh we'll probably screw some more stuff up but luckily this door doesn't really matter it's just it's, uh it's not uh not something spectacular and it's not going on anything spectacular so i'm so sick of doing door bottoms i don't think we're going to do the other side right away uh what i really want to do is, is get into the the sectioning and, and the chopping of these for a chicken truck but that's uh you know you got to fix everything first before we uh before before you do the fun stuff, unfortunately. And I'm not sure we were originally gonna use that, uh, that GMC cab for the rest of it, but now I'm thinking I'm gonna just, well, I, I don't have a choice. I have to find a better cab, or I may use uh, one of the trucks, other trucks I have. Um, if it doesn't sell, I'll just cut that one up and use that cab, because I would like to fit this door without the skin on before I put the skin back on or before I start customizing it just so that I know it's it's all good but again that's uh, that's a long ways off but that's that's what's happening with this project anyways sorry for the rant uh, but I just thought it was thought it was good to show that uh, old Kyle he he messes stuff up quite a bit especially when he gets new tools and he thinks they're gonna just magically churn out you know this this miracle thing and and uh, that's never the case that's not the tool's fault the tool is a shrinking disc and it shrinks metal and i tell you it works great but uh, the tool over here he needs to get his act together anyways thanks everyone for watching